Hey, Trip Zero here, and I'm driving. It's another drive time with Trip Zero. I haven't done these in a while, and uh, so it's probably been a year. But I thought I'd do it again because yesterday morning was the Mercury Transit. Okay, that's really off topic, Trip. It is, but it was cool. Well, I hope. I only got to see it from pictures from uh, from NASA, uh, way better than the pictures I could have taken, but I tried to get some pictures of Mercury transiting in front of the sun, which happens uh, very rarely. The next one will happen in about 13 years, um, and it was pretty cool. I like Mercury. I think it's an awesome planet, so I want to talk a bit about Mercury and make the case for Mercury colonization. Now, the big push nowadays, since we've been to the moon, has been Mars, Mars colonization. And I guess that's fine, but Mars, uh, Mars kind of sucks. Um, Mercury sucks too, in almost all of the same ways that Mars sucks, except for one, and we'll get to that later. Mars, the problem with Mars is um, after you get there, you, if you want to live there, you need several things. You need a, you need shelter because of the uh, solar radiation, solar rays um, from the sun. And um, you will need something to keep you warm, an energy source to keep you warm. Um, now the Earth it protects you from the, the solar radiation um, and ionizing particles high energy particles by the magnetic field. Mars does not have a magnetic field, and that's why it has almost no atmosphere, which is another problem. You cannot breathe on Mars. Um, you have to have a pressurized suit. You have to live in pressurized habitats, um, shielded, and pressurized habitats. If you go outside, um, obviously your suit's not going to have adequate shielding, but it still needs to be heated and pressurized. So it's kind of, it's complicated. And then another problem with Mars is it's so far away from the sun. It's got about 40%, I think, the energy, uh, solar radiance that the Earth gets. So there at the, at the surface, we get about a thousand watts per meter squared average across the Earth over a year. And uh, Mars will get about 400 watts. Is that right? Um, per meter squared. So it's not very warm and there's not a lot of solar energy. So solar panels, you could use solar panels, but they're not gonna perform great. And then if you do use solar panels, you know, what um, sandstorms and stuff's gonna cover that up in no time. Cause the wind, it is windy and the wind can pick up those fine dust particles and blow them all over your panels, which is what's happened to the, I believe the Curiosity Rover that NASA sent up there, got caught in a sunstorm could not see, um, could not charge its batteries, and so it's failed. May not be curious, curiosity. One of those older rovers that was solar panel. Anyway, that brings up the main difference. Now, Mercury sucks in the same way. Same ways. It has, it does have a magnetic field, but it's probably not powerful enough because it's so close to the sun. So you have to have shielding in your habitat. You have to have a pressurized habitat. Um, you don't have to necessarily um, have heating, but it depends on where you're at. 
you might need cooling. Um, now, the temperatures on Mercury fluctuate wildly from day to night. Uh, daytime's about four over 400 C, I think, and then nighttime's like negative 200 C. So it's really cold and really hot. But, um, depends, again, it depends on where you're at. In the polar region on Mercury, if you go about one meter below the surface, it's room temperature all year round. This is calculated, of course, because we've never sent anything due to the lack of Mercury propaganda uh, to Mercury and landed there. We don't know much about Mercury. Um, but the main difference is you have abundant energy sources on Mercury and you don't have them on Mars. Society and civilization grows at the rate of energy, how much energy you have. And so if you're going to build a colony on Mars and rely on solar because it's the easiest thing to get going there, you're going to grow that society very, very slowly. Now there's some chemical processes, right? Or nuclear, but to build a nuclear fission or maybe in the future nuclear fusion plant without infrastructure that we have on Earth. I mean, it takes 10 years to build a nuclear fission reactor here on Earth that's of any reasonable size to, to power, you know, cities. How are you going to do that on Mars without the infrastructure? It's just going to take forever, right? You're going to have to build all that infrastructure up, the cementing, the reinforced concrete, the, the, uh, the metal, allergy, everything. So it's going to be really difficult. But on Mercury, abundant, the most abundant source of energy is, is right next door. It's the sun. And Mercury gets four to nine times the amount of solar uh, irradiance that the Earth gets. Stick one solar panel up, you're getting four to nine times the amount of power from it than you get on Earth. It's crazy. So, um, there's way more energy for heating and cooling than there is on Mars. Now the downsides of Mercury are, um, it is, while it is about the same distance from the Earth, the, um, the way orbital mechanics works is you have to increase, you have to increase your velocity which gives you a slower orbit, counterintuitive, to get to Mars. It's easier to get to Mars than it is Mercury, even though they're about the same distance. Um, you have to go um, cancel out the difference in velocity between Mercury and the Earth. You have to fly retrograde, um, which is, you know, clockwise. Um, I'm getting myself confused, but the point is, it's very, very difficult to get to Mercury. It takes almost as much energy to get to Mercury as it is to escape the solar system, and it's why, and it's why it's almost impossible to get something flown into the sun because you have to cancel out wherever you're coming from. If you're on the Earth, you have to cancel out all the orbital velocity of the Earth so it can fall into the sun. So it's crazy, but if you can get to Mercury, it's a much better place for colonization than Mars. Um, it was largely ignored. It did not, they did not think there was water there. They thought it was too hot. They thought it was tidally locked in a way that it was permanent. There was parts of Mercury that were permanently in the sun. That's not the case. It's like in a, you know, two, three orbital, Variants where you know each third rotation is, is is two days or something, two Mercurian days. But anyway, it's it's complicated. But it does have a day-night cycle. It does have water ice in the uh, craters on the poles that have permanent shade. It's cold enough to have water ice. They believe there's lots of water ice there. Where on Mars, there's really no. Conf I mean, we've never been to the poles. I mean, I guess. We know there's water there underneath the frozen CO2, we believe. Um, but on the other, you know, the surface, it's pretty barren.
So uh, Marge, you're going to be at the poles, which you get even as a reliable source of water at the moment. You're going to be near the poles and you're going to get even less solar radiation there. You're going to have to like do some crazy stuff to get energy. It's going to be hard. So that's my take. That is my case for Mercury. Spread the word if you care. If you don't and you want to go back to my gardening videos, I'll have more of those coming up. In fact, I'm going to go in the greenhouse right now and uh, check on some of the rebuild stuff that I've got going on. Trib Zero out.